What's up, YouTube? Renick here, and uh, I've got a project I've been working on. Um, got a little uh, mid-project video here for you. Just wanted to show it off because I'm just pretty, pretty excited about you know the state that it's in right now. Um, so I got a little video overview for you, and uh, why don't you check that out? Hey, what's up, YouTube? So here's a little thing that I've been doing. I've uh, been building a uh, Raspberry Pi Game Boy. So tonight, I uh, actually wired up all the pieces that I've had laying around, and uh, <coughs> I just tested it out, and miraculously, it works. So as you can see, I've got Super Mario World running here, which, uh, don't worry, I actually own two copies of Super Mario World, so I'm okay with emulation. But, uh, so yeah, here's my Raspberry Pi. It's uh, currently covered by you know, the uh, GPIO cable here, but uh, as you can see, I've uh, removed both of the uh, USB ports and the uh, Ethernet port to slim it down, and then I've wired up this USB port here to run anything I want. Right now, it's running my. Uh, PS4 controller connected to the Raspberry Pi, but um, eventually I'm gonna have everything shoved into a little box and uh, you know running on uh, the native controls there. So here I've got the uh, PowerBoost 500 charger from Adafruit, and uh, that accepts power and charges the battery and then returns power back to the Raspberry Pi and anything else that I want. Right now, it's powering the Raspberry Pi, the monitor, and the sound unit. This is uh, Adafruit's mono sound amplifier. Um, I'm gonna have to tweak around with the settings with that one. But, uh, oh yeah, and, and uh, there's the battery. As you can see, it's uh, the charging light is on, so it's charging, and then that blue light means power's on, so, I mean, obviously. And this is a uh, 3.5 inch monitor that I uh, picked up from Amazon. <coughs> um, there's a lot of uh, talk with these about how uh, when you buy them, they're, you know, since they're all for car monitors, um, you know, like backup monitors or whatever, uh, they all run off of 12 volt. Well, there's ways to make them run off of 5 volt, but the one that I got actually didn't need it. Um, I can't really lift up the board to show you, and I already tossed the box and all the instructions and all that. But the one that I had, the model that I got, the uh, actual monitor itself did not come with any buttons. There were no buttons on it protruding anywhere. Um, and uh, once you open the case, you could see that on the PCB that there were uh, spots for the buttons to be mounted, but they actually weren't there. So apparently those will just run straight off of 5 volt no matter what. So I just went ahead and wired up with the Power Boost 500 and it works fine. Um, and then uh, over here, I've got the, uh, the case I'm going to be using. And uh, it is a reproduction uh, Game Boy DMG case, you know, DMG.Matrix game, the uh, original Game Boy. Um, so this I got from Kitsch Bent. Um, they're a really cool supplier of stuff. I mean, as you can see, it's uh, not exactly like the original DMG case, but it's uh, good enough for my purposes. So I've uh, gone ahead and you know cut out the uh, the bezel around the monitor to fit this one in there, and then uh, I've also cut extra holes here and here and here and here where I can mount more buttons and because I also want to uh, play PlayStation games um, I've got spots marked here and here 
for you know L2 and R2. Um, let me show you the inside of the case here. So the inside of the case is very well gutted. Uh, I just took a Dremel to it and uh, used some hot glue and some super glue to uh, reattach the battery door case here. Um, so yeah, I've got this little switch. Where did it go? Switch, switch, switch. Wait, I lost my switch. Oh, here we go. So yeah, I've got this little switch guy here. And uh, he's going to uh, end up right here in the Game Boy case with uh, a little uh, aftermarket switch that I also got from Kitchbent. Um, and uh, so yeah, I'm gonna power with the Game Boy there. And then I've, I also picked up this from Kitchbent. This is the uh, Common Ground DMG control panel. So I can uh, have all of the controls of the original DMG Game Boy with only one ground on the Raspberry Pi, which is really nice because the grounds on the Raspberry Pi GPIO are pretty limited. <clears throat> and I intend to use the GPIO from the Raspberry Pi to uh, do all my controls. So yeah, I've got that. That'll get me you know, the up, down, left, right, start, select, and B and A. And then uh, over here, I've got from a uh, old aftermarket USB Super Nintendo controller. Pull the focus. Um, yeah, I just I pulled those out of a crappy little USB Super Nintendo mock-up controller, and uh, just use a little bit of super glue to uh, you know glue them right to the uh, some buttons here. Yeah, you know, these little guys. And uh, for now, that's what I'm going to be using inside the case. I've still got to uh, fit everything. Um, I've got a general idea of where everything's going to go in the case. But, uh, yeah, so uh, that's what I've been working on. And, uh, yeah, maybe I'll post some more updates if there's any interest. All right, later. Pretty cool, right? I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. Um, there's a couple things in the video that uh, I didn't go over and I want to uh, go over right now. Um, first off, I haven't seen anyone do, like, a, a full build log with a Raspberry Pi 2. Um... I've seen lots of them doing them with, you know, the uh, the older B's and the smaller, you know, the A's, whatever it is, A plus, I don't know. Um, but I haven't seen anyone do it with the uh, the you know the newer powerful uh, Raspberry Pi 2 Model B, which is what I have right here. Um, so uh, I mean, there's great examples online of mods just like this using you know the older or smaller versions of the Raspberry Pi but uh, nothing with uh, you know Raspberry Pi 2 so feels like I'm going into uncharted territory here I mean like it, it's you know you, you have to do a deep search just to find like you know the, the GPIO pinout you know like what you know what goes where you know how am I gonna do all this for my Raspberry Pi 2 but, um, so, I mean, with those older examples, um, I've taken what they've done and, you know, applied it to my project that I'm working on here. Um, and, uh, so, uh, one thing I want to talk about was, uh, the case. So, you know, I've got, uh, this really amazing reproduction case from Kitsch Bent. And, uh, as you'll notice, it's not actually, you know, exact it's not exact so as you can see it's squared off here in the corner and instead of rounded like the uh, the original DMG case and uh, you know the uh, speaker grill is different you know there's no uh, you know, you know, ridges on the back anything like that um, you know it's not original and it's not authentic but I, in in my opinion, it's better. Um, one, you know, the uh, squared edges here, 
and it gives you a little bit more room to uh, you know to uh, fit stuff in. Um, the other thing is, I mean, if you're taking apart you know an old DMG Game Boy, I mean, those things are classics, man. So many of my uh, <laughs> vacations when I was a kid, I mean, you know, my parents would be like, "Oh, look." Look at the Grand Canyon. Look at those amazing hills. Look at look at the painted hills. Oh my God, Petrified Forest. Oh, look at all the stuff we're driving by. I'm just like, Samus, Metroid 2. So, to see things like that, you know, destroyed for the sake of someone like this, it, it breaks my heart a little. But on the other hand, it does look retro and awesome, and I love that. Um, but the other thing about these uh, cases from Kitsch Bent is they're cheap. I mean, I paid like ten, eleven dollars, and then you know shipping for mine. So if I screw it up, well, I can just pay another ten or eleven dollars and get a new one. And speaking of screwing it up, um, one thing that I've noticed that I haven't figured out how to um, fix yet, or uh, well, it's uh, <clears throat> a lot of the screw holes on these are uh, you know, right here. One, two, three, four, right? And uh, they would screw into where the uh, you know, the bezel for the Game Boy Advance should be. And um, by taking out the bezel to make room for the uh, the larger screen size, a 3.5 inch screen. I don't have anywhere to screw this thing together at. Same thing with the uh, um, yeah, the battery door right here. That was another place. Was um, through the battery door, you know, it, it would screw to here and uh, over here. So you know, two spots in the battery door. I think maybe yeah. So. By taking those out, I now no longer have any points to uh, actually affix this case to itself. So I'm gonna have to figure that out. Um, but I mean, I do like the modifications that I've done to it so far. Um, and uh, speaking of modifications, I mean the uh, the extra buttons. I really like that. You know the uh, two there, two there. I'm gonna have you know end up with an additional here and here, um, and uh, for those for the buttons, you know, like I said in the video, using the uh, uh, you know DMG Common Ground Control Panel uh, that I got from Kitchbent, and you know it's got the uh, awesome little pads here, you know. So you you can use you know this type of you know the floppy silicone um, you know connector pad things with you know the original hard plastic buttons and you know um, because I mean like people use you know the uh, I've seen a lot of people use the uh, clicky buttons you know these little guys. You know, nice little clicky clicky like this, you know. You hear that? I don't like that. I mean, it's fine, it works well, but it doesn't feel like a Game Boy or any controller ever. Um, they all, since the NES, you know, since I've been playing video games since the NES, they've all used the little silicone pads. Um, but with the, uh, you know, with this little guy, it doesn't come with any pads. You know, it doesn't come with any buttons. It's just, you know, the uh, the PCB here. Um, Kitsch Bent does have buttons that they offer. You know, the, it, I, I picked this up, you know, um, these little guys here, uh, picked up a pack, um, they're for the, uh, the DMG, 
So and then you get your, uh, you know, uh, up, down, left, right. You get your BNA. Um, you get your power switch. Power switch there. And you, know, you get a little, you know, port connect or port cover for the uh, the link port, uh, which I won't be using because I've got a. Uh, I'm gonna have a uh, USB out where the the link port is, but that button pack doesn't come with start and select, and it also doesn't come with the actual silicone pads. What they do sell, however, are buttons like this. It's actually you know A and B, and they have the uh, the connection pads there, and they feel pretty good. I mean the whole thing's made out of silicone, so you know it doesn't feel completely authentic. But you know like you know start and select, which if you buy just a uh, the, you know, the button pack from Kitchbent, it doesn't come with start and select. So you got to buy one of these things anyways. So yeah, like that whole thing. Pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> when it comes to the uh, the actual buttons, because uh, you know, we're using you know this you know for A and B, and then uh, I just had a word to go. Yeah, you know, I'm going to be using these, which I pulled out of an old uh, Super Nintendo wannabe USB controller. Um, Clicky button. Uh, that actually adds quite a bit of height to the whole damn thing, and uh, I'm not sure if that's going to fit. So uh, I'm anticipating that I'm going to have some difficulty with these little guys, and um, I'm probably going to end up with using a, uh, a PCB from a, uh, a different controller something um, I'm thinking right now using the uh, the PCB part from a, uh, a Wiimote you know, the, the, the nunchuck itself that part um, you know the C and the Z that's the actual PCB is pretty small I think it will fit and be you know, small enough thin enough where I could uh, really like you know how it goes um, and, uh, yeah, by doing that, it would be uh, a lot thinner, so I might save some space there. Um, but I would, I want to try and use these because I don't want to have to destroy working controllers if I don't have to. Um, so I'm going to be doing a full build log with, you know, like parts and where you can get these parts and prices of these parts. Um, I don't think it's going to be like, you know, a full tutorial where it's like, oh, well, now you have to, you know, what, you know, solder this wire from ground on the you know, soundboard to the ground on the you know, you know, Raspberry Pi. And it's going to be more like, well, okay, so, you know, I soldered the, uh, the points from this part to that part and, you know, there you go. Next. Um, but yeah, um, this is running a little long now, so. I'll wrap it up. Um, I'm pretty pretty excited about this. I'm gonna be throwing some more updates out there. Um, if you guys have any questions, throw them in the comments. But uh, yeah, I think this is gonna end up working pretty good. All right, later.